members of this committee. We came together and put together a bipartisan effort. It, among the sponsors for, over time were myself, uh, Senator Whitehouse, Senator Grassley, and, and others. The notion was that the prison experience should be more than punishment and separation. It should be perhaps a, a new look at life, uh, a life-changing experience in a positive way. And our measurement for that is quite simple, recidivism. How many people leave our prison system and commit another crime, another victim uh, along the way? And that's very basic. And I think the record, as I've read, and I hope it's the same that you said, is pretty interesting. We know that generally recidivism rate of the Bureau of Prisons population stands at 43%. 43% commit another crime after release from prison in the Bureau of Prisons system. However, if they've been through this program in the First Step Act, only 12.4% recidivate and 87.6% don't. That's dramatic. It means time well spent, resources well invested, not to have a recidivism situation like this. So tell me where we are in terms of providing the resources for more participation and whether or not we need to do more. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think we always need to do more. As of the beginning of this month, we were offering over 110 structured activities. About half of those were evidence-based recidivism reduction programs, and the other half were those productive activities. And you're right, the data is very clear. I think that we are at a great moment in time as we pivot out of the pandemic, and we have institutions that are now um, thinking very creatively about the programs that they can expand now that we don't have institutions under lockdown. Furthermore, as we continue to tackle this recruitment and retention issue, you're going to see even more progress because we'll have fewer people engaged in overtime and augmentation, freeing up individuals to engage in those programs and those activities. So let me talk about Thompson for a minute, and I mentioned it in the opening statement. How did Thompson reach that point, such a low point that you had to virtually close the mission of that uh, institution. And what happened to the people who were in that institution? Are they gathering in another place? Were they sent to another place? How do you know we're not going to have the same problem wherever they're sent? Thank you, Senator. I, I don't know how an institution gets to that low, low point. Um, as you said, the warden reported he hadn't seen anything like that in his career. I, too, hadn't seen anything like that in my 30-plus year career in corrections and law enforcement. And so those individuals who have engaged in that behavior have been referred for an investigation. Some have left the organization. Some are pending criminal investigation. Others pending administrative investigation. For those that were moved out of the institution. We are paying attention to them and their behavior. We also have really increased training at that institution. When we were able to shut that institution down, we really um, went back to basics, went back to corrections basics, and rebooted our training program there so that we could change that culture. Culture change takes time. I think changing that institution's mission to a low security mission will help in rebuilding that culture and making that change. And we will be keeping a very close eye on that facility. How much do you attribute this to understaffing and augmentation? Senator, I think that accountability is the most important thing. I don't believe that a lack of staffing and augmentation leads people to treat other human beings that poorly. And so for me, it was violations of policies, practices, violations of best correctional practices. And so I wouldn't want overtime or augmentation to minimize the egregious choices that these employees made in taking care or rather not taking care of those of our, in our care and custody. I'm glad you took this job. It is historic uh, that you're in this capacity. Certainly the first year I felt, I don't know if others shared it, I think they might have, that you were entitled to the preliminary opportunity to assess the Bureau of Prisons and to talk about change uh, and maybe even initiate some change in that first year. We expect much more in the second year. What can you tell us? So I think we have great plans for the second year. So the first year we really 
did an assessment, uh, developed our executive team, engaged in the strategic planning, as I talked about in my opening comments, which I think is really going to set us on course for some initiatives that are going to improve, imp improve employee wellness, really focus on restrictive housing, and implementing these principles of normalcy and humanity throughout the institutions. We've opened our doors to members of Congress and others to come in and see what we are doing. We're collaborating very closely with the office of the Inspector General and the GAO so that our doors are wide open to them in terms of oversight and accountability. So I think in this next year, you will see the advancements of our strategic planning, the change in our mission, and a true focus on our new core values. Thank you. Senator Graham. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Peters. I appreciate your, your efforts on behalf of 